All right, so we're going to start talking about the feather board and hooking it up to the thermocouple reader and getting your thermocouple able to control the temperature of this resistor. All right, so let's see what I've got hooked up. So I've got the thermocouple board here, the sensor board. Um, the VN pin is going to the the three volt pin on the feather here. Let me see that. This can also run on five volts, so it could also go to the VUSB pin. Um, the ground pin is going to this ground rail, which is connected to the um, feathers ground here. Uh, the way the breadboard works is all of the pins in this row are connected. So it goes over to this row, through this wire, and then through this wire to ground. So you could also just wire it up directly. And then the other pins are the data out, the clock select, or chip select, sorry, and the clock. So my data out is connected to this blue wire which is going to pin 9. The chip select is the yellow wire that's going to pin 10. And the clock is the white wire that's going to pin 11. So that's all the connections for this thermocouple reader. And then you, of course, have to wire up your thermocouple with the ends twisted together. So let's see if that's working. So I've got my USB cable here plugged in my laptop. Um, this board has a lot of other things on it. I'm not using them. I'm not using any of the power. The power right now is just coming through the USB cable. So let's go over here to the modules and let's pull up the simple set point heater code. Let's put this into Arduino. I'm going to erase everything, throw this in. The set point is at 50 degrees. Um, if you remember, I said that the data out is the blue wire that's going to pin 9. So when you change that to 9, the chip select is going to pin 10. And the clock is going to pin 11. I'm not going to worry about the heater right now talk about that in a second. So let's go over to tools and then see, make sure I'm using the right board, the Feather M0. Um, and the way where you find that is under Adafruit SAMD and then Adafruit Feather M0. If that doesn't show up, you have to go to board manager and you have to type in Adafruit SAMD boards and install that. You see I have this installed already. You might need to install this one too. I can't remember. So once that's installed, make sure that's selected and make sure the correct USB port selected, serial port. You can see it recognized that it's a Feather M0. Um, if there's a problem, you might first off try going over here and pressing the reset but button twice like you're double clicking. So just go, you can see that that light stayed on and that should reboot everything. Let's try uploading now. You shouldn't normally have to do that, but if you're having a problem, you might try it. So. I think it's finished compiling it and it uploaded. Um, you can also try if you're having problems with your board in addition to pushing that reset button twice, you can try clicking on burning the bootloader. Never mind, that's not going to work. You need a separate programmer for that. Um, so you also were using this library here, so if that's not installed, you'll have to go to Sketch 
include library, manage libraries, and then make sure this is installed. So I'll just type in max 31855. And there it is. It's installed. If not, you have to, to click install and install it. And once that's set up, we should be able to click upload. And it looks like it uploaded successfully. Let's see if we're getting the data back. Open up the serial monitor. That looks right. So our internal temperature is right at 20. The thermocouple is right at 20. And the set point's at 50. Now it's not going to heat up because the heater is not connected to the thermocouple right now. The thermocouple is just hanging in the air. We can even plot that, open up the serial plotter. You can see those lines. If you want to add the uh, legend here, you have to reset it because it sends out that string at the beginning. So if you click the reset button, then you'll have what the colors stand for. And see if I grab onto the thermocouple probe here, you can see it rapidly climbing and then leveling off. That all looks pretty good. So the next part of the system is the heater. So for the heater to work here, I've got that pin 13 is connected to the heater. And if we come over here, we can see that that is indeed the case. We've got pin 13, it's going to this yellow wire that then is coming over that wire is coming over to this MOSFET transistor. You might not be able to see it, but it's going into this first pin here, which is the gate. Also connected to the gate, I have an LED with a resistor going to ground. So that way, when this LED is on, you know that the board is getting is uh, powering this on. And you can see right now, the board is in some kind of weird mode where it's it's like pulsing this on and off. That's one problem with using pin 13 is that it's also you used to like display the status of stuff. So it's turning on your heater when that's happening. The um, Then the connection of the heating element here is just that I have my nine volt power supply coming in the positive leads going to the right side of this resistor. The left side of the resistor goes over to this black wire, which goes to the middle pin of the transistor, which is the drain. And then the third pin is the source, and you can't see, but behind it, that's just going to ground. So when we apply a 3.3 volt voltage to the gate, which is the first pin, the transistor connects the drain and the source together so the current can flow through this resistor to ground and then back out of the negative lead of the power supply. So let me go ahead and attach the thermocouple to this resistor. As long as it's in contact it should be good enough for what we're doing. All right. Now let me re-upload this. Try and turn the transistor so you can see it. So I got an error that this board is not available. Let me try one more time. All right, it worked that time. You can see now this is no longer pulsing on and off. So this pin is not on. Okay, now it's on. And if we come over here, we should be able to plot the data coming out. So 
Let me reset the board so we get the legend. There we go. So the internal temperature is down here a little bit above 20 degrees Celsius. The thermocouple is rising because the heater is on right now. And we should see that once it gets up here to 50 degrees that it turns off. Also, if you want, I'm going to go ahead and have a little analog voltmeter that reads from zero to five volts. I'm going to connect one side of it to ground and then one side to the gate of this transistor. So you can also see from this meter, if I can get it to stand up, you can see it's uh, right now the, the feather is putting about 3.3 volts, 3 volts on the uh, gate of that transistor. Oh, it just it went to zero volts because we've now reached the set point and you can see the temperature continues to rise for a little bit and now it's going back down so that it just turned back on the heater you can see this is back up to three volts so it looks like that's working pretty good and just to verify we can uh, Bring another voltmeter in here. And uh, if you want to see, I'm going to hook it up across the leads of the resistor. So you can see right now there's, let me swap the lead so it's not negative. There's five volts now that. Okay, now there's zero volts because the heater's off. Now the heater just turned on, so there's five volts. I think I misspoke. I'm actually using a five volt power supply instead of a nine volt. So I'm not getting quite as much power, but you should be able to see that whenever this is at three volts, which is the gate of the transistor, then we're applying five volts across the resistor. So. In a little bit, once it gets hot enough, that should turn off. It's taking its time. It's still heating. So now the gate went to zero volts and the voltage across the resistor also went to zero volts. All right, so next what we're gonna do is hook up an oscilloscope to the board so that we can measure the voltage across the uh, gate of that transistor and try out some pulse width, width modulation. So. I'm going to take this oscilloscope probe and stick it, connect it to the uh, gate of the transistor and connect the other lead to ground. Then I'll go over here and open up the software. You can see it's not making, my thermocouple's not connected very good. Let's see if I can fix that. It's a little bit better. All right, so let's put this on plus and minus five volts and kind of a slow, Speed. So there it was at 3 volts once the temperature got above 
the set point and went down to zero volts because the feather is turning off the transistor. And then as it's cooling down, we should see it, yep, just turn back on. So nothing too exciting there. The next thing we can try to do is to do an analog write. So the syntax for that is just the pin and then the value, and that can be between 0 and 255. So let's go over here to or our Arduino. So I'm gonna get rid of these if statements that control the heater. And I'm just going to leave this the same, but I'm going to do an analog right so let's see so um it can be a number between 0 and 255 for the value the pin is pin 13 which is called heater right here so i'm going to say let's write the heater and i'm actually going to make a variable Let's see, is that an integer that it takes? Yeah, here they're using integer. So I'm gonna make an integer called I'll actually I'm just call it PWM. I'm gonna set it to one hundred. So then I'm going to write the PWM value there. So this is the only place it's getting used. It's in the setup. So it's just going to set the PWM to 100. And then that's never going to change as the code runs and reads out the temperatures. So zero means there'd be a duty cycle of 0%. And 255 means there'd be a duty cycle of 100%. So 100 should be somewhere in the middle of the two. So let's upload that. Got an error. Let's try it again. Okay, we uploaded it. Now let's check out what the oscilloscope is seeing. Looks like nothing. Try uploading it again. There we go, now it's working. Let's try uploading that again. Oh, interesting, for some reason, 
it seems like I have to open up the serial monitor before the program actually runs. So see there it ran. Let me exit out. And now we're getting that, that duty cycle. And I can measure, let's see, the duty cycle. It's measuring as 39%, which if you do 100 divided by 255, that's 0.392. So that's pretty close. If we change it, let's go all the way up to 255. Whoops, there it is. This should be 100% duty cycle. And then I guess we have to open up the serial monitor for some reason. And then There we go. So it's almost 100% duty cycle. If you look, there's like some small little period where it's not quite 100%. It goes down to zero Oops, ever so briefly, but it's pretty close. Now, if you hook up the analog meter again, Let's see what that's showing. So put one side to ground, one side here, also going to the gate. You can see it's reading right at three volts. Let's go back to that 39% duty cycle. So what we should see is if we put in 100 here, and then we upload it, and then we open up the serial port. We're reading like 1.2 volts is what it looks like to me. Something like that. And so if we take 3.3 .3 and we multiply it by 0.39, which was the duty cycle, we get 1.287 volts. So that's pretty close. And this meter, it's reading DC, but it averages out the PWM to what the, the average value is. So even though if you really look at it, the oscilloscope, it's not DC. Like we pull it up over here, that's definitely not DC, but the average value of that is what this is displayed. It kind of averages it out. If we also look by default, um, we just measured the duty cycle is at 39%. We can also measure what the frequency of these pulses is. Um, we didn't tell it that, so there's some default value. I measure from the start of this one to the start of this one looks like 1.36 milliseconds which corresponds to 735 Hertz so these pulses are coming out at about 735 Hertz all right so now let's talk a little bit about what varying the duty cycle does so if you remember, we tried a duty cycle of 39%, which corresponded to making an analog write with the value of 100, because the analog write function can go from 0 to 255. So if you do 100 divided by 255, so we've got... That equals, let's get out my calculator. Equals 0 0.392. All right, so also, if we want to figure out what power this corresponds to in the resistor, we know it's not full power 
full power would be writing this analog write to 255. Um, let's figure out what that full power is. So I'm using a 5 volt power supply. Um, we know that the power is equal to the voltage times the current. And we know the voltage is 5 volts. In my case, it might be 9 volts in your case. Um, the current we can get from Ohm's law, the current is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance. Plugging that in, we get that the power is equal to V squared over R. And I know that V is 5 volts, and we're using a 22 ohm resistor. So I have 5 squared divided by 22 is 25 divided by 22. So the power is 1.14 watts. But we're only applying that power for 0.392 or 39% of the time. So to figure out the equivalent power when we're at this duty cycle, this would be if we had plugged in 255 in the analog right. But since we're plugging in 100 and we're only getting a 39% duty cycle, you just multiply these two because it's at this power for 39% of the time. So you multiply them, you get you get that the the power at this duty cycle is zero point four four five watts. Now, um, for like a rough approximation, say you want to figure out how much hotter the resistor will get if you just run it at 1.14 watts as opposed to 0.445 watts. Well, um, what's going to happen is if you just set the duty cycle to a certain value, a certain power, and just let it run over time, you're going to see that if this is, um, this is like temperature here, and this is time. And say that like room temperature is at this value. Well, starting out, everything's at room temperature. And if you start heating right here, you'll see that at first the resistor is at room temperature. And then it'll start heating faster. And then it will slowly taper off until it reaches some steady state. And um, if this is the steady state that it reaches like at 1.14 watts, if you put a lower power, it'll reach a lower steady state. So if we put in 0.445 watts, it'll reach a lower steady state. And the reason that it reaches a steady state and doesn't just keep increasing in temperature over time is that the more something heats up above the ambient, the farther it gets above the ambient temperature, the faster heat flows out of it. So like if you have something that is a thousand degrees and you bring it into a room temperature room, the heat's going to flow out of it a lot faster than if you have something that is just 10 degrees hotter than ambient and you bring it into a room. And that actually is what Newton's law of cooling is. It says that the, um, like the flow of heat out of something is proportional to how far above or below the ambient temperature it is. And so like once you reach the steady state where the temperature has reached its max and it's not growing anymore, that means the heat we're putting in, which we know what that is, in this case it's 0.445, and in this case, it's 0.14 or 1.14 watts. So we know that that has now equalized to the heat flowing out of the resistor because the temperature is not changing. So that means that like at this 
temperature, whatever it is, 0.445 watts are flowing out of the resistor. So you can kind of plot like this steady state temperature versus how much power is going in. And what you'll get is like, if you plot like, this is like the temperature above ambient that it reaches. And this is the power going into it. It's, it's almost a straight line. It's not exactly because like, as things get really hot, you get like all these air currents and stuff, but for, for first approximation, how far above room temperature is just proportional to how much power you're putting in. And um, what determines like the slope of this line, so how much, so it's pretty much like the, the temperature it's gonna reach is gonna be the, um, it's gonna equal the temperature of the room plus some constant K times the power. So like if you put zero power in, your resistor is gonna be at room temperature. And as you increase the power, it's gonna get above room temperature by K times the power. And you can figure out this constant, and it might even be in the data sheet, and um, it'll have units of like degrees Celsius per watt. So for instance, like say that we knew somehow that K was equal to 10 degrees Celsius per watt. Then we know that if we put in 0.443 watts, the temperature is gonna be whatever the temperature of the room is, which let's say it's 23 degrees Celsius, plus this constant, which is 10 times the power, which is 0 0.445. So that means that the temperature is gonna be Twenty three plus four point four five. So it's going to raise it four point four five degrees above ambient, which is twenty seven point four five. All right, so I did this for the uh, five watt resistor we're using. And uh, the values I got were that at, so my room was at like 20.8 degrees C. That's the uh, temperature of the room. So if I put in a duty cycle of, actually when I did the analog right at, 25, which you have to divide by 255. Which is 0 0.098 multiplied by this 1.14 watts, which is the 100% the duty cycle power. It is 0 0.112 watts. And um, the highest temperature that it reached when I let it run for a long time, kind of like the steady state temperature where it rose and then it leveled off, that at that duty cycle was 26.25 degrees Celsius. So that is... You can see it's above ambient. If we look how much above ambient, 26.25 minus 20.8 is 5.45 
degrees above ambient, and that was per 0 0.112 watts. So that was about like 48.7 degrees Celsius per watt. And I also did this for um, two other duty cycles and I got values of about 36.9 degrees Celsius per watt when I had the duty cycle at um, at 19 percent so it, it didn't it's not the exact same but like on a rough approximation for every watt you put in you're going to get between like I don't know, around 40 degrees Celsius rise above the ambient temperature. So by varying the duty cycle, you can change the how far above ambient temperature the resistor rises. So I looked up the resistor that we're using on Mauser. I'm pretty sure this is the same one. It's an, why do you pronounce that, Psycon. 22 ohm 5 watt resistor um, if, I op if I open up the data sheet here you can see it has a heat rise chart which is kind of what I was talking about with the more heat you put into the resistor the higher above the ambient temperature the heat will rise so if you look they have one for the 5 watt resistor which is what we're using they also have a 10 watt and a 15 to 25 watt so if Newton's law of cooling or heating where the um, temperature flowing out of it is proportional exactly to the um, difference between the resistor temperature and ambient, then this would be a straight line. So you can see it's pretty close at low wattages, but then at higher temperatures, it kind of varies a little bit from that. So. Um, Assuming that like this is a straight line up to like this point, it looks like the line goes through 100 degrees C above ambient at around, I don't know, 55% of the rated load. So 55% of 5 watts is... 2.75 watts and there's a rise of 100 degrees C. So if I do 100 divided by 2.75 watts that comes out to be 36 degrees Celsius per watt. So that's not too far off from what I calculated. At one point I got you know uh, 48 degrees Celsius per watt at another temperature I got 36 degrees Celsius per watt so it's not exact I mean it depends on the airflow and if it's touching anything and how heat's flowing out but for this resistor just hanging in the air for every watt you put into it it's going to rise about 40 degrees Celsius above the ambient temperature so that's just kind of uh, and that, that's true for almost all situations that the the heat rise is proportional to the wattage and you can even find for heat sinks they'll have a similar thing like for this many watts into the heat sink you can expect the corresponding rise above ambient temperature so for a heat sink you would like this to have as low of a slope as possible where you could put in a lot of power and the temperature would only rise a little bit. 